Homework tips for intro to polar functions worksheet. I don't think you'll have any problem with uh, numbers 1 through 4 because it's very similar to what we did in class. Pretty straightforward stuff uh, like the page 1 of the notes. But number 5 is kind of tricky so I want to work through that with you. First of all we have an equation that says I want you to actually plot the points by hand and, uh, and then we'll look at how to do it on the calculator as well. So describe the figure first of all. Uh, well, we need to graph it first. <laughs> so never mind about part A, we have to do graph it first. It says R equals 5 cosecant theta. Uh, notice you'll get, you're going to get an error message. Actually, it'll say undefined. So let's just actually put some of these values in here. So on the calculator, I'm on a, on a graphing, on a scratch pad, and I'm just going to go to trig and cosecant and put in 0 and see what I get. See, it's undefined. Why is it undefined? Well, it's undefined because cosecant is 1 divided by sine of theta. And sine of theta is 0 when we put in 0. The sine of 0 is 0, so I'm dividing by 0, so that's why it's undefined. Um, now if I go up and get cosecant again, and let's put in now uh, the next one, which is pi over 6. So get my pi divided by 6 and put that in. Notice it's 2. Um, actually, though, I want 5 cosecant theta, so let me go back up here and get this, um, and this should be 5 times this, 5 times, uh, it'll take me a little time there, okay, so it's 10, all right, and then I'm going to do 5 times cosecant of pi over 4, so let me go down here, change this to a 4, enter, now look, I get a radical. That's not terribly helpful. I'd really rather have the decimal form for graphing. So I'm going to do a control enter here. And that gives me 7. So basically this is what I want you to do to fill out the table of values. Um, so if you haven't done that yet, uh, stop and do that. I'm going to go ahead and then um, show you those with the table of values pulled in, filled in. Okay, now we have our table of values filled in. We need to start plotting points. I'm going to uh, change my view here and make it a little bit uh, bigger because I have trouble seeing this <laughs> honestly with my eyes so I'm going to make this bigger so I can see what I'm doing better. So let's think about obviously at 0 it's undefined I can't plot that. At pi over 6 the radius is 10 so I'm going to plot that point right there. Um, at pi over 4 we're at 7.1. Oh actually this may be the same grid that, I, that Jarek told me was not 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, this is actually 14 wide. So uh, 10 isn't all the way out. This was not a good choice of, of graph for me. So that's actually 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 is right there. Okay, so pi over 6, 10. Pi over 4, 7.1. So I'm going to count out to um, to 7.1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, a little bit bigger than 7, so right here, that would be pi over 4, 7.1, pi over 3, 5.8, well the next one would be 6, so a little less than 6, that would be 5.8, um, and 5 pi over 6, 10, so 5 pi over 6, 10 is... I go out 10 again so I can swing around to the I'm kind of taking this swing this all the way around to on the same line but now I'm at 5 pi over 6 so right here and then I'm at undefined then 7 pi over 6 negative 10 okay here's 7 pi over 6 so if we take 10 and we go over to negative 10 um, negative 10 7 pi over 6 would be here, um, but realize negative 10 and then go to 7 pi over 6, I ha I'm starting at negative 10, I have to go 7 pi over 6 all the way around to here. It's basically the same point as where I was, it goes back to this point again. Or I could think of, let's go positive 10, let's go to 7 pi, 7 pi over 6 and then flip it over 180 back to where it was, I end up on the same point again. When I do 4 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3 is right down here, um, negative 5.8.
So if I go um, a positive 5.8, which is this one right here, 5.8 right there, positive 5.8 to 4.3, but then I say, oh, but that was a negative um, a negative 5.8, then I have to flip it back 180, I land up on this same point again. So then I end up here again. And when I do um, 3 pi over 2, negative 5, I think I skipped pi over 2, 5. I sure did. Pi over 2, 5. Pi over 2, 5 would be right here. There's pi over 2, 5. And negative 5, 3 pi over 2. Well, if you go to 3 pi over 2 and then go to negative 5, it would be up here again. So we keep hitting the same point. So once we start getting to these negative points, we're graphing on top of the positive points. They're the same point. And if we kept going, um, let me, let's look at some of these other questions. What is the period of this graph? See the definition below. The period is the number of radians... Um, or degrees needed to graph the entire figure before it starts to repeat. Well, notice it started to repeat as soon as we started to hit those negative numbers, so it looks like the period is pi. It looks like we go from 0 to pi, and it's at pi it starts to repeat again. So we would say the period is pi here. Does this graph have a limit? What happens as zero gets cl or theta gets close to 0? It's undefined at 0. It's undefined at 2 pi. What happens if we get really close to those numbers? So let's put those into the calculus. Pick a number close to 0. And uh, I'll go up here, grab the 5 cosecant. Let's put in a number close to 0. So 0 0.001 or something like that. Oops, I put in point oh, 0 0.001, something like that. Ooh, a very large positive number. So this is saying when the angle is really, really, really small, the radius is really, really, really big. Okay, so let's put something in that's close to 2 pi, uh, two pi which is 6.28. So what would be close to 6.28 but not 6.28? So 6. Two seven nine 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 or something like that. Once again, very large, but in the negative direction now. Hmm. So what is that doing? What exactly is that doing? So we're saying if the angle was really really skinny, the the point zero zero one really small angle, it's going to keep going up, but really gradually. So we're saying. It's going to go way out there. As, actually, let me put another page in and ex kind of explain what happened. So we're saying we've got these dots along. Here's our polar graph. We've got these dots along here, kind of like that. Here's our. Now, let's say we're at zero degrees. Let's just a slightly above zero. And we're going to take this and we're going to go way, 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 way out here. So we're saying somewhere out here, we're going to have a point. At when this is like 5,000, okay? Um, same thing if we have a point that's really close to 6.28, but really close um, under there, we're going to go, actually, I should have had you do something close to pi. That's what I really should have done, not close to 6.28. should have had something close to pi to show you that it goes out in the other direction just as far. Anyway, we've got these dots. What does it look like? Well, if we connected these dots... Basically, we get a line. So 5 cosecant theta is just a line in polar form. Hmm, interesting. Uh, we talked about earlier why we got an error message, because the reciprocal of cosecant is sine. And so any place where sine is 0, cosecant will be undefined. Um, hopefully this helped with this problem. Let's look at the next problem. The next problem... Um, basically, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to use the equation here, 3 plus 7 sine of theta. I want you to plug in the different values for theta. I want you to fill in the R values and plot the points. Um, this will give you a figure that is not familiar. It's not going to look like anything you've seen before. So just after you've plotted all the dots, connect them to the best of your ability. It will be a curve. It won't be jagged looking or pointy looking. So plot the dots, connect them. Um, and then you're going to trace the graph. 
So when you trace the graph, um, follow the trace around until you find a place where the theta value, remember it's r theta, so that would be the second number, where the second number gets close to zero, and put the r values, um, I'm sorry, other way around. The find where the radius equals zero. So trace around till r, the first number gets close to zero. It's going to happen twice as you go around the figure. Put those two numbers in. Then you're going to say, algebraically, could we find what the, where those two points are? So you're going to have to remember a little fact about the general solution for sine. Remember that inverse sine, if we have sine of theta equals some number. We don't know what that number we're trying to find. So let's call it y. Sine of theta equals y. So y, um, so if we want to find, now let's do another, an example. So we, ha we end up with sine of theta, for example, equals 1 half. So theta is equal to, well, if we do inverse sine of 1 half, we just get pi over 6, um, which in decimal form, oh, we did that in class today. In decimal form, that's um, about point two five two something. Anyway, it's a small number. Um, and then to find theta, though, we're going to say theta is equal to pi over 6 plus 2 pi n or pi minus pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. Now, instead of having a specific number like pi over 6, so you're going to have some sort of a, um, a decimal value. So when you do inverse sine of negative 3 sevenths, you're going to get a decimal value. And you're going to take that decimal value plus 2 pi. Then you're going to take pi minus that decimal value plus 2 pi n. And you're going to find two solutions that hopefully match the two that you found when you traced the graph. Okay, next page. Um, on 7 through 9, we're going to graph some graphs here. And um, I'm new to graphing on the Inspire, so I'm not sure if my directions are quite um, exactly what they're supposed to be. I don't think you have to do the zoom standard and the zoom square. Now that I think about it, it may be that the calculator will do that for you. Because, for example, if the graph is supposed to look like a circle and the, the axes are distorted so that the x tick marks and the y tick marks aren't equally spaced, it won't look like a circle. It'll look more like an ellipse, for example. But I think the Inspire automatically sets a square window whenever you're in polar form, so I think you're okay with that. But basically, I just want you to plug this into the calculator. Remember that if you go to menu, um, this is equations or something, graphing equation, graphing edit menu. I forget what this graphing entry or something and edit. And then number four will say polar. And you can graph in polar form. And it'll come up with an R1 theta equals an R. And, it'll, and underneath, so let's just graph one of these. Um, so if I go to my graph page. So let me insert a graph page. No, I guess I need to close my scratch pad. Close the scratch pad. There we go. There I'm on a graphing page. So I'm going to go to Menu, Graph, Entry, Edit, and Polar. And notice I have it pops up as an R. So I'm going to graph that first equation, which says 8 sine of 5 theta. So 8 sine of, oops, I've got two 8s in there. Don't know how that happened, but it will back one up. Okay, 8 sine of 5 theta, so 5 times, and then I need to have, oh, my, I lost my parentheses, 5 times, and then theta. I recommend control catalog, which is the little book over here, because once you've picked theta in there, it'll always be the first one that pops up until you change it to something else, and that way, um, but you can find theta also if you go down to the pi button, theta is down there as well. So there's two places to find it, and I don't really want that in there. Okay, now we graph. Push graph. Oh, look at this. We have this lovely, what's called a polar rose. And yes, you do not have to do zoom square because it automatically does it for you. I love to move that over. So we have our five petaled flowers. So I just want you to sketch this pe these petals. You don't have to be exact about it. Just sketch this design on your paper. Now there's one on there that I ask you to change theta min to negative 10 pi and theta max. Um, 
I'm actually thinking that it's not under Windows settings. Let me double check on that. But if I go to menu and window settings, um, no, that is not where you go. Where you're going to go to change those settings is you're going to go right here. See where it says theta is in between 0 and 6.28? The first one I want you to make it between 0 and 10 pi. And then the second one I want you to make it between negative 10 pi and 0. So um, let me just I'll let you try that, and then if you have trouble, we'll look at it in class tomorrow, because I want it to be a surprise what it looks like. But this is where you're going to change your window settings, is down here um, for that problem in number 9B. So uh, hopefully that'll help. Um, actually, I wanted to talk about one more thing, number 10. Let's just talk about number 10, what I'm looking for. Um, these blanks should either have x, y, r, theta in them. Okay, So you're referring to this little drawing over here. And so um, we're not, I won't, don't want specific numbers here. I just want x, y, r, and theta in these blanks. So whichever, wherever you think that's appropriate to put the x, y, and the r, theta. Then number 11, I said, what if x was negative 10 and y is, is 12? And that would make sense for this particular quadrant two point. Then what would be r and what would be theta? So basically, you're just converting to polar form, which is the same thing you did in the very first part of the worksheet. So that's what I'm looking for on that. Um, hopefully that is helpful to you and will help you with your homework.